3D printing is increasingly being mentioned on the news and in the media as a technology for the future. Some people are saying that 3D printers will become as commonplace as printers and scanners are now. People seem to be getting really excited about it. So where and why might we use a 3D printer and how does it work? Well, let's take an example. Let's imagine you're at home and you go to do a wash. You open up the washing machine door and the handle comes off. Now, to replace that part at the moment, which is essentially a plastic part, you'd probably have to call a repairman. He would go to a distribution center and he'd pick up a replacement part for you. And that part itself would have been designed on a computer and it would have been injection molded, probably somewhere like China where the labor is cheap. And then it would have been shipped on a massive container ship 5,000 miles around the world to get to that distribution center to get picked out to get fitted onto your washing machine. And if you think about it, that is mad. That piece of plastic has been transported thousands of miles. You know, the amount of energy that it takes alone to do that is crazy. And what's exciting about 3D printing is you have the opportunity to make that locally. So you could download that original CAD file and create something much closer to home. Either fit it yourself or have it fitted by the repairman. And what's really exciting about that is you would then have the opportunity to change that design. So if you had ideas about improving it, reducing material, maybe putting finger grips on it, you could get onto something like Google SketchUp or uh, some simple CAD packages and you could change that design and anybody could do it. And it really democratizes design. And it gets quite exciting because if you have an improved design and maybe you upload it to the manufacturer's website and people start using that, there's the potential that you'd get paid for it. So a really exciting opportunity. It's also a very good technology for trying out ideas. So it's used a lot in Formula One and in aerospace and you know, for trying out ideas very quickly and simply. So I had an idea for a gramophone that amplifies up your mobile phone, your iPhone speaker. And the only real way to try that out is to make something physical. So I designed something very quickly in CAD based on a gramophone. I have it here and have this 3D printed. So this is a stereo lithography part, and let me just demonstrate it. So the idea is that you have uh, your iPhone, you play a piece of music, something reasonably loud. That's before and then with the amplification. So like this, without, without. There we go. And this is made by stereo lithography. So this is a uh, light, a ultraviolet light fires a liquid which cures where the light hits it. So that's how I've made this part. There are two other uh, conventional current techniques. One's called uh, fused deposition modeling, FDM, which is a bit like a molten, a tiny little layer, a tube of molten liquid being squirted out and you build up a part in that way. The final third method is SLS, which is selective laser sintering, and that is using a laser fired at a powder to fuse the powder together. And that actually can be used uh, in powdered metal, and that's the kind of thing that Formula One makes. So it really actually is a technology for the future. It could be used to do all kinds of interesting things. Even the University of Loughborough are using cement, piped cement, to create houses, very precise houses uh, in 3D printing. So genuinely is a technology for the future. Something else to get excited about is subscribing for the Head Squeeze channel and you can do that by clicking on the subscribe button which was probably in one of these directions. <laughs>